Hello and welcome back to Easy Data Recovery. Today we have an interesting case for you guys. We have a flash drive. There we go. We have a flash drive that has been bent. And you can see here, these drives aren't normally supposed to look like that. So there's a few things to consider with this. First off, what data the customer wants. They have financial, they have financial information on here that they want. They're using the computer at the time. It fell. Drive got bent. Second thing, when you have a bent drive like this, how is that going to impact the recovery? Is the port still usable? Will we have to solder on a new port? Are the traces or contacts and they're damaged? Will we have to run new traces? Has the NAND or storage been impacted? What is that going to look like for the repair? So let's go ahead and find that out by disassembling our drive. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the data recovery process here. And the first part of this process is going to be exposing the PCB, the internals of this drive. And uh, this may look a little extreme, a little destructive, but luckily for us, this is not a repair, this is a data recovery, and all we really care about is working with that data on that main PCB. So we're going to start by separating this into two parts, I'm told us the inner and outer housing, if you want, and uh, then from there, we're going to try to uh, open this up. And uh, we're going to do that by slipping a thin metal pry tool inside of this drive. Now we need to be very careful here. All right, so now we have the drive open here. We can see the controller there. And that chip is going to be the one talking with the storage, the NAND inside, and telling it how to store data, how to read, how to write, all that fun stuff. It's basically the uh, conductor of the drive, so to speak. And when we remove this drive, we're going to be very careful using very small motions to try to get it out because we don't want to make that damage any worse. And as the PCB comes free, we can really see the extent of the damage here. And ooh, that is, that is not looking good. That is cracked right in half there. And uh, I'll give a bit of a close-up here for you guys. You can see that as well. Now, it's still in one piece relatively. That crack runs the entire length of it, and it is looking brutal. Now, that is the NAND right there. That's going to be storing all the information for this drive. Real quick, I'm going to point out that controller again. And since this drive is split into two halves, we're going to try to work with both these halves and uh, get all the data this customer needs. All right, so we have our drive underneath the microscope here, and we're going to get started on this data recovery process. And the first thing we're going to do is going to seem counterintuitive. We're going to go in with a scalpel and actually scrape away at the coating on this PCB. Why are we doing this? Well. This PCB is then snapped in half, right? So we need some way of joining these two halves. We need some way for these two halves to communicate each other, communicate with each other. Because unlike a uh, more typical USB drive, the USB A male connector there is not a separate piece. It's not, you know, removable via solder work. It's part of the PCB, and so we need to work directly with that. And that means going in with a razor and recreating those connections. And you may be asking, well, how do you know where to put your scalpel? How do you know where to put your razor? Well, we don't. Well, not directly. We have the experience to know where we should, you know, where we need to put our scalpel. But we don't have any sort of schematic or document we're working on. But we do have a fair amount of knowledge. And we know that each of those indents or line and lines in the board is a separate data or ground or power line. And so we can infer that, okay, well, this would have ran this way had, had this drive been a single, or sorry, this PCB had been a sing, single piece. So we can say, okay, well, we need one bridge, one trace here, one trace there, and we just have to be careful about it because if we scrape away a little bit too much, we risk damaging the board permanently and risking the recovery. Uh, or if we scrape a little bit too much, we risk shorting the board when we plug it in or shorting the expensive tools we use to recover the data off of that, and that would not be a fun day. So once we're finished exposing the uh, bare metal here, we're going to go with a little bit of solder, a little bit of flux, just enough that we can run a trace, but not too much that the connections will bridge or, you know, uh, short, essentially. And uh, you can see these are the actual wires we're using here. These are very tiny. If you can imagine, this is all be being done under a microscope. So these are very tiny wires, and we have to use you know, tools, special tools just to manipulate them. Now, if you guys are interested in sending us anything, we are based in the DMV, and you're welcome to uh, stop by. And for those outside of the DMV, the DMV is the DC, Met Maryland, Virginia area, and uh, you're welcome to come by in person or send us anything, and we'll we'll take a crack at All it. All right. All right. So we have the uh, solder work done here. 
like I mentioned earlier, this is uh, dif differs from typical USB drives in that there's no separate USB connector. This one's part of the board. And uh, when they designed this, they actually designed the housing or casing to sort of fit around it and uh, be build up that connection and be that connector. So once you put all the parts together, you have a normal USB connector, but any one by itself, any of these parts by itself, it's not a connector. And now this, this uh, fix it's going to work. It doesn't need to look good. It just needs to be pretty, which is what they said about me during the hiring interview. And uh, so we'll slot that back together. And you can actually uh, see the controller chip here on the top there. That's what I was talking about earlier. And that's going to control how the data is stored. And we just need to be very careful putting this together because if it snaps, that's all our hard work gone. From here, we're going to take it and very carefully plug it into the PC3000. The PC3000 is one of the professional data recovery tools we use here. Use here. And it is uh, a godsend and one of our uh, best tools. So we're going to slot that in there very carefully, taking our time not to damage any of the connections there. And uh, once that's finished, we're going to use the professional data recovery software we have here to pull data directly from the drive. Now, when we're doing this, we essentially treat each one like a separate case. And we don't just transfer files. What we're doing is actually getting a whole image of the drive. So essentially, it's we're copying everything. And we can actually use this image independently like a, like a normal drive on here. If, we give an, if you give an image to a piece of software, it's going to treat it like it's a normal drive. And uh, from here, we're going to pull all the data off. It's, it's going to take a while, but we're going to have a complete picture of what the drive is, what's working with it, and even any deleted information on there we're still able to access. So once that's complete, we're going to extract it onto a, a working drive, send that to the customer, and that is a data recovery job all done.